let's talk about rowing. The great thing about rowing, it's a full body exercise. We work our lower body and our upper body at the same time. And if you're time starved, rowing is perfect. Rowing is like a three for one. For every three minutes you'd spend on another piece of cardiovascular equipment, you can almost spend a minute on the rower and get the same benefit. So let's talk about how to row properly, safely, and effectively. Let's talk about proper ways to set your body up for proper rowing. When you put your feet into the straps on the rower, you'll see a lot of numbers on the pedal. It's just like cycling. You want to take the middle part of your foot right over the pedal axle on a bike. On a rower, when I put my foot into the strap, that strap should be over the middle part of the front third of my foot. You also want to make sure that your toes and your feet are in line with the pedals on the rower. After I do that, I'm now ready to grab the handle. When I grab the handle, I want to get my thumb underneath the handle, almost like a hook grip when you hold the barbell. Just get a nice, firm, strong grip on the handle. You want to be careful of grabbing too narrow on the handle because that can internally rotate your shoulders, causing your lower back to arch. So you're trying to get your hands close to in line with your shoulders. Once I do that, I can begin to row. Rowing is just like a deadlift. When we teach rowing technique, we really start the athlete out in a proper deadlift position. We talk about making sure your shins are vertical. We make sure that your thumbs are underneath the handle just like they would be on a barbell. What we want to think about with rowing to simplify this is lower body first, upper body follows. So as our athletes begin to row, you're going to notice that they're going to utilize their hips and their lower body to initiate the movement. They're going to drive back with their hips, and when that handle gets to about their knee level, then with a powerful pull, just like a pull-up, they're going to pull the handle into their chest. What you want to be careful of is internally rotating and going too far forward on the rower. Rowing is also a great way to establish good hip and lower back flexibility and mobility. You'll notice both of these athletes are bringing the handle all the way back to the beginning of that catch position. A nice powerful stroke phase. You're not seeing a lot of wavering in that chain. That means they're nice and controlled through the entire movement. This is proper rowing technique. Now once you begin to row in the beginning, you're gonna ask what numbers are important and what should I look at on the display? The C2 rower has a lot of different displays, but what's the simplest display? The one that you're seeing right now. Notice it has the time on top, your per 500 meter split. This is the most important number in rowing. This will tell you if you're on pace, depending upon what distance you're trying to row. The second number, obviously is your meters. That's how much distance you're covering each time you pull on the handle. The last number is strokes per minute. Strokes per minute is an important number. You want to keep that somewhere between 20 and 26 to be efficient over the long haul. In addition to this screen, we also have the fan setting or the damper setting on the side. The numbers are 1 through 10. Just because you're strong doesn't mean that you should set a higher damper. So efficient rowers should be somewhere between four and seven on the damper for most distances that you would see in our World Gym Athletics classes. 